Hello, everyone. Welcome to another day, another made-for-TV drama. Um, today we'll be discussing Fall into Darkness, which is the 1996 TV movie based on a book of the same name by Christopher Pike. Christopher Pike, if you're not aware, was a big teen horror um, author back in the day, back in the early 90s, along with other authors like R.L. Stein, who did Goosebumps, but for me it was more all about Fear Street. Um, the early 90s was a big time for Fear Street. And then there was also Caroline B. Cooney, who did The Face in the Mill Carton, which you may remember became a TV movie too. Uh, Fall into Darkness ended up being one of the only movies of a Christopher Pike book. I, I know that more recently they came out with a series called Midnight Club on Netflix, which uh, was about his book and kind of incorporated several of his other books into the storylines. And I, I hear that they're planning on maybe making some of, a, of his other books into movies, which I'm really excited about. I hope they do soon. Um, but Fall into Darkness is the only book of his that became a movie to date that I know of, um, excluding the series Midnight Club. Anyways, enough about Christopher Pike. Let's discuss the movie. Anyways, going on to the movie, uh, Fall into Darkness came out in 1996. It's interesting because at the time I had just um, really gotten into Christopher Pike heavily. And so it was like perfect timing for me. Um, I was so excited for the movie to come out, see what they did with it. It was only Christopher Pike movie at the time, so it was a big deal. Needless to say, um, and I'm sure anyone who's ever read a book and then watched the movie will agree, the the movie just didn't live up to the book for me. They left a lot of things out. Um, also, the characters, uh, just the actors didn't really pull off the characters for me, with the exception of Jonathan Brandis' Chad. I thought he did a great job. Uh, kind of reminded me a little bit of Richard Thomas in that role. Um some of you may remember John uh, Richard Thomas as um, John Boy and the Waltons. He was also in a few TV movies such as Stalking Laura um, and um, To Save the Children. Stalking Laura was about a man who stalks a, a woman at work. Um, to Save the Children was about a man who brings a bomb into a school. I won't get, get into any more details because we're not talking about those movies today. We're talking about Fall into Darkness. Um... Tatiana Ali was a big actor in the day. I wasn't really into her. I, I, I think she was in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I, I didn't really get into that show. Um, she did a great job. But, um, you know, as someone who read the book first, I had a very clear picture of Sharon in my mind. I kind of felt like she was more spunky in the book than in the movie. In the movie, she seemed a little bit of a worry wart and kind of like whiny and stuff. I don't know. I don't know if anyone will agree with me on that, but she seemed different in, in the book versus the movie somehow. Um, but Tatiana Ali did a great job. I'm not going to say anything negative about that. Um, the woman who played Anne, Charlotte Ross, I've seen her in other movies such as Violation of Trust. In fact, that's the only other movie of hers I think I've seen. Um, that was a great movie. Um, she did a great job in this movie too. Um, it's just... I pictured Anne very differently in the book. She had long, dark hair described as very beautiful, which Charlotte Ross is very beautiful, but I, I pictured her differently um, because I had read the book first. And that was just me being like, you know, superficial. Uh, but, you know, I was a kid at the time and that needs to be allowed, I think. Anyway, so actors aside, um, I'm going to get into a basic plot line for this movie just kind of give you an idea of what the movie's about if you haven't already seen it uh, not going to get into any real spoilers um, and then what I'll do is I'll discuss a little bit the book versus the movie uh, what I liked in the movie versus what I liked in the book better um, and then I'll talk about some movies that I think are similar so let's get started fall into darkness opens the way many of these tv movies open with a snapshot of the big dramatic scene that kind of got this whole ball rolling, so to speak. The point at which the happy life that everyone once knew is lost forever. Into the screaming void. We hear a woman scream as she falls presumably to her death. I'll get to that presumably part soon. Another young woman, whom we learn is named Sharon, is being taken into the county jail. All the things are done. 
fingerprints, handcuffs, perp walk as she's led into a dark cell. You can tell things are not looking good for dear little Sharon here. She's out of her element, and we're left to wonder what the heck happened? How is she ever going to get herself out of this nightmare? Good question. Christopher Pike's fall into darkness flashes across the screen. As you can see, this is Christopher Pike guy was a big deal at the time. It's not just fall into darkness, it's Christopher Pike's fall into darkness. Then we go back in time. Sharon, we learn, is a promising pianist and a tender-hearted soul who really cares for her fellow man. Karen rhymes with Sharon. Karen Sharon. Anyway, this caring quality of hers is exemplified when she comes across a frightening scene one day. She sees a blonde woman standing on a bridge, about to jump off, while all her friends stand around, begging her to reconsider. Sharon is understandably concerned. She gets out of her car, prepares to intervene, or maybe just do a little bit of rubbernecking, but I don't think Karen Sharon is like that. I think she legitimately wants to help. The blonde woman is not persuaded by the others, and she takes a flying leap into what I'm sure most viewers are convinced at this point is certain death. As it turns out, though, she is not suicidal. She's just a little daredevil, and she was only getting ready to do a little bungee jumping. Sharon is not impressed, probably thinking to herself, what a drama queen. Not long after, Sharon is in a classroom, playing piano for a bunch of uncultured losers, as the teacher or professor basically calls them. Not sure why the teacher felt a need to take the students down a peg in order to set up Sharon as the most wonderful piano player ever, but whatever. That's 90s wit for you. After class, Sharon is approached by a young man named Jerry, played by the same guy who played Thackeray Banks and Hocus Pocus. Interesting tidbit of information out there for all you Hocus Pocus fans. The viewer will probably recognize him as the brother of the blonde woman on the bridge the other day. He apologized for his sister's devil-may-care behavior. He introduces himself to Sharon and makes it clear that he is very interested in getting to know her better. Sharon has a lot of things going on in her life. She has big plans. She's going to Juilliard and needs to practice, practice, practice. But she's decided to carve out a little time for fun. After all, she can't have her single mother being the only one in the house going out on dates now, can she? So she goes to a party at Anne, who is a blonde woman from before, and Jerry's house. Actually, more of a mansion. Turns out Anne and Jerry Price are loaded. And both their parents are dead. Died in a plane crash. Sharon's father died in a plane crash as well. I thought those kinds of crashes were supposed to be rare. Anyway, Sharon becomes friends with Jerry, his, sister, his sister's fiancé, Paul, and also Paul's brother, Chad, who's kind of a little tag along. They go on rock climbing adventures together. Anne warns Sharon not to break her kid brother's heart because he's very fragile. So what does Sharon do? She goes ahead and breaks Anne's brother's heart. And then Jerry ends up killing himself by stepping in front of a train while drunk. In the book, he killed himself with a gun. But why go with statistics when you can go with a train, I guess? Anne blames Sharon for her brother's death, and she decides to get revenge by faking her own death. Her plan is to jump off a cliff and make it look like Sharon pushed her. Seems simple enough. She will have a rope attached to her so that she survives the fall. She enlists her fiancé's help. Her plan is to escape with him and make a new life together. I'll end there because I don't want to spoil anything for you. Here are some things I liked about the movie. I like that we got to see a little of Jerry and Anne's relationship before he died. In the book, Jerry's suicide was entirely backstory. I would have liked it better in the book if we got to see him more as a person and not just as this ghost from Anne's past, so I think the movie did that well. Also, watching this movie as an adult, I realized that Charlotte Ross was really the perfect person to play Anne. Once you get past superficial things like the fact that she didn't have dark hair, I think she really nailed the role. She was this classic mean girl with a little bit of a passive-aggressive streak to her, sometimes just straight-out aggressive, and she had this sort of intimidating beauty. And Tatiana Ali was good at p playing someone more reserved, yet feisty, when the occasion called for it. As I said earlier, Jonathan Brandis really owned the part of Chad. Chad is this kind of sad loser, a tag-along brother of alpha male Hall. 
As expected, some of the names were changed. For example, instead of Ann and Jerry Rice, it's Ann and Jerry Price. Maybe so as not to confuse them with the vampire author and the athlete. Also, a secondary character who served little purpose in the book and movie other than to be a witness, I guess, was called Nico in the film. That was not his name in, in the book, though. Some things about the movie that I didn't like. They cut out the whole courtroom drama that was central to the book. I admit it wasn't really needed, but it did introduce a hilariously sleazy lawyer named Johnny into the mix. Sharon did have a lawyer in the movie. He was in maybe one scene and was completely forgettable. I also didn't like the fact that Anne and Sharon didn't have much history together in the movie. They had literally just met. It made it hard to feel invested in their relationship. I didn't buy the fact that Sharon would be invested in locating Anne once the truth came out because she barely knew her and she'd be like, wouldn't she be like, oh, forget that. She tried to set me up for her murder. Later, fool. Also, there was a female friend of Anne's who was not in the book, but was placed in the movie so that she could stumble upon a dead body in a completely unnecessary scene. It turned a psychological thriller into something out of a slasher film or an Arl Stein preteen horror novel. I won't go into specifics. I don't want to spoil anything. But there was a line of hers that was kind of funny when she said that she had to go to Anne's house to get her shoes back. Her friend is dead and she's worried about shoes. Reminded me of Hilary Swank in the movie version of Buffy, crying over the fact that her dead friend died before returning her jacket. I call it the movie Buffy to avoid confusion, but as far as I'm concerned, it's the only Buffy. If you haven't seen the 1992 classic, you need to watch it ASAP. Christy Swanson is Buffy, and that's a fact. The ending in the movie was very different than the ending in the book. Once again, I don't want to give out any spoilers, but the ending of the book was extremely depressing and dark. I do think the movie's ending was more appropriate, though. Um, it leaves the viewer with a ray of hope, so I guess that was a good thing about it. Some movies that are like Fall into Darkness are as follows. There are lots of movies where a character falls off a cliff. Last week I discussed Justice for Annie about the girl who was killed by a couple who took out insurance on her. Another one is Don't Look Down, about a woman who becomes afraid of heights after her sister falls to her death. The living sister starts seeing her dead sister's scarf everywhere she goes after that. Another movie that reminds me of Fall into Darkness is Disappearance of Christina, starring John Stamos. That one was about a man who is suspected of killing his wife. His wife is presumed to have fallen off their boat and lost at sea. He becomes convinced that his wife is still alive and that she's stalking him. Other movies where someone fakes their death include Stranger in My Bed, Sleeping with the Enemy, Bitter Vengeance, the Cover Girl Murders, Linda, Love, Cheat, and Steal, Shadow of Obsession, and Wife, Mother, Murderer. Violation of Trust, a.k.a. She Says She's Innocent, also stars Charlotte Ross, and it's about two girls who get into a fight with a friend who falls down an embankment and is later found dead. It has a bit of a twist in the end, kind of like Fall into Darkness. It's a really decent thriller, and it's on Tubi and Freebie, which is free with ads. Interesting side note, Christopher Pike actually wrote a book called Gimme a Kiss that was very similar to Fall into Darkness and that a girl fakes her death in order to frame a friend. It also had a character named Sharon in it. Fall into Darkness wasn't as hokey, though. To sum up, this is a decent thriller that will keep you on the edge of your seat. I give it three out of five stars. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Another Day, Another Made-for-TV Drama, and take care.